G'day, this is Captain Oob, and I've got one question, and Earl's gonna ask it. If anyone knows the answer, please put them in the comments, because I, I don't know what he's saying. So, what we're going to do is, we're gonna figure out whether this bow, a compound bow, anti-armor, lucky, and also ghosts on the end of it, so that's kind of useful for keeping stealthy, can this thing solve a colossal problem? And, well, you might be surprised with what we find here. So we're doing 270 damage, that is with everything as uh, here. So we've got a bunch of archer perks and bow before me, which is a kind of a cool pun there. Quite like, I think the best thing about this perk is the name, because it's basically tank killer, but for crossbows and bows. See, it says it right there. So that leaves us just three ranks of concentrated fire, which is, you know, we only need one of those, but there's nothing that makes bows reload faster, which is a shame. But we'll be, uh, basically making them reload faster and stringing crits together faster than we could normally. Uh, we'll get to that as we get into the gameplay, but we've got a couple of other things too. We've got tenderizer, we've got critical savvy and better criticals to make those criticals do a lot of damage and get them faster. And we've got Enforcer so we can pin the dude in place whilst we uh, shoot arrows into him without him knowing. We've got Mr. Sandman because as far as the game is concerned, this is a suppressed weapon. So that allows us to get a better sneak attack crit damage bonus there along with Covert Operative. Covert. Alright, Covert. And then we've got Adrenaline just at rank 4 just to fund that one thing. End up killing barely any peanuts at all. So that's okay. It went sort of underutilized during this fight. We're only missing out on 6% additive damage, which is basically nothing anyway. So that's okay. Obviously, Nerd Rage is there because I'm going to be doing this at Nerd Rage Threshold. And all of that unyielding stuff is going to increase my luck to a point where I can do... A whole lot of uh, criticals. You need that at 34. We've overshot by a bit, but that's okay. We can overshot even more if we if we do this, which increases it to 38 and 41. Now I think I've got the serums here, so I don't actually penalize myself that much. But those are my mutations. Talons was there and decided to just basically get myself uh, just drink the serum, so I wouldn't have the uh, minus agility in my things bring it down but you know we could have done that a little bit better don't think damage wise it'll change much but you know having that extra agility there's that those 20 extraction points may have continued my vat streaks to be a little bit longer than they were and legendary perks are as follows got taking one for the team uh doesn't work especially when i'm not in a team that was dumb but we've got follow through, that's the main one, because if we have that equipped, then the magic mosquito of damage will just help us if we're sneaking and doing all that. It's a big, it's like doing 90% of the work here, but, you know, that's it's what we expected to do. It's a good perk, and I think that covers it. Okay, we're 30 seconds away, call the boost on, so apologies for the fan noise, but we want to keep cool during this. Otherwise, the computer will shut off, and I'll lose the minutes I have preparing for this. Actually, it's more than minutes, because i got to get the uh, the weapon and stuff ready. And just to see whether we can get the 375 times thing, certainly can. And this is slow, so what we'll do instead is uh, basically use this in the most cooked way possible. And that's going to be easy, because I've got a trick up my sleeve. It's, uh, I don't know if it's an exploit, but you can get, you can massively up your rate of fire if you use bows and arrows a certain way, and, uh, we'll be looking to do that. Ooh, I've stuck myself into a zoom in here. It's the aim down sights bug. Can I get out of that, please? Thank you. Well, that's a good way to start off, isn't it? So what we'll do is just the standard practice of, uh, shooting this guy. We've got a crit ready, so we'll get Enforcer to go. There we go. And now, we just shoot him in the head. And so, 497 for a critical is actually not too bad, but now I'm going to hit him, but actually not hit him. You can't see in the damage numbers, 95. Y you see that the arrows, I'm only knocking them which is the term for when you put the arrow on the bow. That, it's called knocking. I learned that from watching some Skyrim gameplay. I think I caught all of those. 
but what I'm doing is just knocking the arrow and then just letting it go as soon as I see Winter pull her elbow back. And doing that means I can basically I'll just sort of sit here and get a lot more DPS than the game thinks I ought to because despite these only falling about less than 500 mil away from me, they're still presenting the damage. Now obviously I'd get much better damage per shot and it might be worth it on the criticals to pull back fully. Which is uh, probably what I might do going forward just to try to speed up the kill. But if you want to just smash arrows into the ground like this, you can totally do that. And it's a way, if you're looking for a more rate of fire based approach to using a bow and arrow, then that's the way to do it. That's 195 in the head, and you'll see like normally I have to wait for the reticule to really kind of uh, like it really needs to converge there onto a point of nothing for it to actually work and I need to be a little bit more careful but the crits as you can tell they do a whole lot of damage the anti-armor thing helping quite a bit I'm sort of mistiming this I might just sort of uh, pull back for the criticals there we go criticals activated give her a bit and then uh, hit for 600 and whoops blew that one crits going and gone 682 not bad I think those numbers are lying to me however and we are activating uh, follow through pretty much constantly but basically we're going from crit to crit at this point that's just how it's gonna be the AP usage on this thing isn't actually that bad um, but you'll see that <laughs> we take up a little bit of our AP just drawing the arrow and uh, because that takes a little bit of time. Critical is activated so we'll send this one full pelt. There we go. And get hit unnecessarily again. Crits activated. And we'll have two shots of nothing. Crits activated. I think it's a way, it's just a much faster approach of doing it this way than it is to do it otherwise because we're getting a lot more damage. There's less time between criticals would normally be. So I think this is the way to do it. He's almost at mutation threshold already and Enforcer doing a really good job. Maybe when he gets to mutation threshold, he starts fixing his legs a little bit quicker because again, he's just kind of standing there. That was really close. And we're back to moving around mode here. We'll have to watch that because sometimes I wonder why he keeps going. And I might just cripple his faces too because, well, I can, but it'll help my perception a little bit. And we'll go for the Corrosive Head this time. We'll get a little bit closer. We've got a ton of range on this thing, like more range than you'd get out of a suppressed fixer. That's why our accuracy is so good. But um, that allows us, if we're getting a little bit closer, maybe, no. There's actually nothing to do with the velocity of the arrows as in terms of how much damage they do so you don't get a whole big amount of damage bonuses when you use these things at close range although i i don't know i'm not an expert in ballistics generally when bullets go slower they do more damage because they just go straight through if they're going too fast but if they get stuck in there and mess up some internal organs or whatever so he's actually in a pretty good spot so we'll continue just to try to go as fast as we can and those crits are doing somewhat okay only doing 183 so maybe i'm being a little bit impatient we'll let it there we go that's much better the problem with using these things in third person and without the uh, use of the reticule is that um, you don't actually know exactly when you'll get the most damage out of your shot because it takes time to charge right but that time we got a decent amount and this is kind of how it's going to be also you'll note that I'm going into a stealth field I I'm actually seeing that happen so that's cool right get real close to him actually no he he's doing those he's doing those noxious spits real close and I think, he I think we're just squishier than this usually sometimes she she's taking it pretty well here um, I don't know if, do they nerf Earl? I don't think they did, but 
for some reason, I used to get one-shotted by him all the time. Not so much now. It's a nice crit to crit there. There you go, 249. Not too good. Just slightly missed timing this, but there's nothing really else to it. So there you go. This is kind of be going to be what the whole fight is going to be. That was a waste of a crit. I'm going to go for a little bit of just spamming just to see what it does on the old health bar. Because most of the time, like the arrows, okay, so that's 30 damage. So we're basically doing nothing there. But it's an option. Perhaps if you were if you were mobbing and you did and you didn't need a shit ton of damage to actually get whatever you wanted to get killed done, like back when I did a bloody lucky ex one with explosive arrows, I found that just knocking it and just sending it at scorched really killed it. Oh, you see the arrow sort of uh, float in the air really weirdly there. That's interesting, isn't it? Another 682 strength critical there. That is not bad at all. Quite like that. Critical's ready. Give her a moment and let her go. There we go. 682 seems to be the maximum. There we go. There's a crit. Hold for a second. Let it go. So we've got to get a little bit of muscle memory about you if you want to use this specifically, like, super effectively. And we're in a little bit of trouble here. We're at the point where he might actually one-shot us, but honestly, the uh, the death uh, penalty at this point, not that much of an issue, because uh, he'll be sort of pinned in this sort of area of the arena anyway. Give me the crit. There we go. And let it go. There we go. 682. But this is probably the way to do it. I'm seeing that just knocking and firing arrows as fast as possible just isn't that effective. He's on the move yet again. And you can actually put a decent amount of uh, hits, a decent amount of uh, grey on his health bar there before it's into nothing. And there's the crit. Hold, hold, hold. Yep. And hold down the space bar. We're fortunate that there's barely any AP consumption with this thing, even with the without the 25% uh, less VATS cost as the tertiary legendary effect. But we're slowly chipping away at his health, doing pretty well here. Just feeling a little bit frisky. Let's get a little bit closer. Target that screeching head in the middle, perhaps. Maybe, maybe this head. I don't like the poisonous head. In fact, I don't like any of his heads. We'll switch over to the combat shotgun now because, once again, he is out and about. And Vats has proven to be, well, annoying. We can regenerate AP whilst we shoot his uh, little hand feet there, because they're actually arms. You look at them closely, they look like hands. He's got, his legs are right there in between him. And just, I will actually like the way they've animated him. It must have taken a ton of work to bring this fella to life. And, you know, oof, that was lucky. Thanks, Serendipity. Because, like, there's a lot of moving parts here, and they've... It's obvious that they've put a lot of effort into this guy. More so than the Scorch Beast Queen, which is basically a normal Scorch Beast, but scaled up. The, uh... The Earl just has a little bit more character, even though if he's... He, he's not... He's not creepy. You know what I find scarier than him? Those random mad Brahma that you'd find in... In Fallout 3. Those are scarier than Earl William. So, you know, obviously the lighting here and it's presented to be this whole big scary event, but I mean, he's manageable. Scariness in video games doesn't come when you can easily kill it by sitting below it and shooting it a couple of times, you know? The, the scary video game monsters are the ones that you can't kill, the ones you have to avoid. Like that big fella in Resident Evil who's got the trench coat. He's kind of cool, right? What's he called? Is he Mr. X? I think that's his name, but he's pretty scary. You can't go and kick his ass. You can't sit under him, tickling him with arrows until he finally drops. That's silly. You gotta run away from that big guy or kick your ass. So, let's stick to the plan here. We're almost done. Nice little uh, shower for you, Earl. And if you want to stand there... At least you'll die a queen, a, cl a clean. I don't know if you, a queen? No, not, not quite a scorch beast clean. Not pink enough, a little bit of pink there, not too much. It's uh, 
hit the 700 there, which was pretty neat. I don't know how I managed to do it. But regardless of that, we're almost done. I'll just go the rest of these at full power, or at least a close approximation to the full power. Don't know what the time's going to be. We'll have to see when we exit bats. One more should do it with a crit. There we go. And we end up with about 13 minutes left, which, again, is uh, faster than a Gauss minigun. Now, you might think of this as a primitive weapon, but the people who designed this back in the day, I don't know when bow and arrows were first made. It may the Native Americans had them, but... You know, they couldn't possibly comprehend what a Gauss minigun is and what it might do. But they were onto something because they designed a weapon that was immensely superior to it somehow. Despite being just a stick with a bit of string there that fires this stupid thing. But apparently, they knew what they were doing because they figured out it would kill a Wendigo Colossus faster. Actually, that's where Wendigos come from, isn't it? The Native American dudes, they like, say, hey, if you eat people, you turn into this monster. And we managed to get 96 back, so the final ammo count is... We used about 200. That's efficient. Wow. Good job, bro. Bit of a sleeper weapon. Obviously, it's not going to be the fastest thing. I think the shotgun, uh, this thing, would be far superior. Um, simply because of how it works these days. But, uh, if spec'd right, of course. But... You know, the anti-armor compound, very lucky, it's it's alright. I can't really say anything too bad about it because we barely use any ammo. Obviously overestimated exactly how much arrows I need, but could have gotten away with 300 in here. And I sort of had a few left afterwards, so, you know, that's efficient and I quite like it. And with ammo smith rank 2, you make 72 of these, so... One, two, three, four, five of those crafts. Five flux, and that's enough to kill Earl. So, there you go. And I didn't go and kill any peanuts, but we could potentially get some back. And look at them. They're just standing there doing nothing. And I think I've gone on for long enough, so we'll uh, back out of here. And who would have thought such a primitive weapon using but a string and some draw arms to get the damage would do better than a thing that has magnetically inducted rounds firing at like a million times faster than a bow would? Nobody? That's okay, you shouldn't have been expecting anything less. So here we are in Fallout 4 again, where we've got a nice view of the nothing that's out there, the complete void, but... Leave your suggestions for what I should do next. I know Radium Rifle came up, so if you want to see a nice little Stealth Commando run with a Radium Rifle, maybe we could put some, like, terrible dummy legendary effects on it, just so we could have a little bit of time. But I think since I did it with a level 1 or pipe gun, that a Radium Rifle should be able to smash it. But, you know, leave your suggestions below. Maybe you've got something a little bit more, I guess, outside the box for me to do. Thank you very much for watching, guys.